Good. Thank you, Dr. Scott. Well, listen, I want to just talk to you just briefly this afternoon about uh, uh, thin films and physical properties that you can get in the various crystals. Uh, you can get some of these same kinds of properties and can use the films for some of the same activities that you would use crystals for. And you know that there are seven crystal types, and uh, you can go through all of that. But then, bottom line is, that, and I'll do that here, that we can make thin films. And there is a recipe that we do that with. And Patty, I guess some of these people may be in your lab this summer and have made some of these same type thin films. Once we get the thin films and we dope them with um, silver nanoparticles, what we've used so far, and we find some enhancement of properties. That's the bottom line. And this is for an IR sensor and infrared waves uh, from about 0.7 microns to 300 microns is the range that we are looking at. Now, so I'm going to go through this in some, you know, small steps, and, uh, and then we'll see how this goes. So I'll give some little outline here, uh, the introduction, background, and the objective theory and noise fluctuation. And I'm going to come back to that, the experiment, some preliminary results and acknowledge. Um, noise fluctuation for any uh, experimental electronic system is obviously critical. And you will find that um, uh, uh, but when something, when system fluctuates, the uh, outcome from that can be extraordinary. In fact, uh, a cup of coffee on this table here will ultimately evaporate because of small fluctuations at, at the extreme end of the Boltzmann of, of distribution function. And so any system that you have that is measuring something, there's going to always be some electrical noise. And the quality of your signal is going to depend on the signal to noise ratio. Dr. Lau mentioned briefly this morning the DSAW, the, uh, the uh, specific detectivity, and uh, I will have some comments about that uh, easily as well. And then as we go through this, my mind is still on the question this young man asked this morning. Uh, in terms of any sensor, if it's to be a dedicated sensor for a specific purpose, a activity, there should be one uh, property of the, the material that change with the stimuli. So you need to be able to exploit the nature of the material, identify what variable uh, that you want to change without the system being degraded. You don't want the sensor to, uh, with the stimuli, well now that's generally a negative aspect, that the, that the environment calls the sensor to lose its, its quality from degradation. That's not what we're talking about here. That's, that would just shorten the life of that particular unit. What we want is some physical or chemical, mostly physical here, we are busy, process that change with respect to the stimuli. And here, this is going to be a, uh, a temperature sensor, and we will find that as we go through what is going on. So this is about triglycine sulfate again, and that's the, the typical workhorse uh, that is very well known 
and the system has a spontaneous polarization uh, and it can you, you know you want to stay under the the Curie temperature when there's a phase change uh, for these ferros and electrons that will change from the ferro to e e electric to a dielectric uh, which is not what you want the systems also have a hysteresis and you probably already know that hysteresis uh, refers to a lagging effect of the uh, of some property with respect to the stimulant and also the system can can remember it has it can remember its history is the other way that we talk about history this is a cartoon that uh, sort of illustrates that uh, the physical structures inside the material in a dipole form and if you and this is at a constant temperature and this is this also is at a constant temperature but it's now wired to an external circuit uh, with some ammeter here if you make arrangement to change the temperature with time uh, the increase in or decrease in the temperature you get a current in the external circuit so that is the bottom line for this kind of a, of, a, of a system is to arrange uh, some structure with the active material in kind of a a cup capacity type arrangement with uh, uh, electrodes on it and have it so that you can have a, a a way of changing the temperature and you can then get the current out of it so you can have a nice sensor. So this once again then becomes the uh, structure that we're speaking of uh, our waves or photons can enter into the material this is this is is intended to show transmission through the upper surface uh, waves in the range as I say up to 300 uh, microns in wavelength uh, in three space and this is some thickness of the of the uh, system and a pyroelectric uh, material Dr. Uh, Agarwal was talking about uh, piezo electric material this morning and there is a class of systems then that a uh, class of material that are also pyro electric as well and piezo electric you put a stress on the material and you get a voltage out of uh, pyro electric here you have a change of temperature with time with the uh, pyroelectric coefficient and the cross section here, you you get a current. Uh, this system really works. Now, all of the noise that I spoke of a moment ago, the uh, uh, fluctuations within uh, occurs at this output. There is a voltage uh, output here uh, that you can then interface with other kinds of, uh, of uh, instrumentation. I keep trying to make the analogy that this, as well as being a thin film, can be a crystal. And with uh, the electrodes soldered onto the uh, faces of the crystal, then you can have the same type of situation. This is a structure then of one of the crystals that's been created here. And once again, the uh, TGS crystal. Um, some of the advantages uh, with the versus the thin films versus the actual crystal, um, the, you can enhance the sensitivity and, and then of a large spectral bandwidth. And bandwidth, another word. So. You are capturing all of the language uh, at the interface between the electronics, optics, chemistry, physics, material science. And all of that language interface then to ultimately allow you to be 
articulate and to be uh, able to understand what's going on in this area. Uh, sensitivity, then you would like your sensor to be fairly sensitive to a fairly wide range of temperature. And these systems here do not need to be cool. Uh, the ones that will work and will put these particular techniques. Uh, low power output, rel relative fast uh, response at general low cost system. Uh, this is a, a depiction of many types of solid state uh, uh, systems that can operate as sensors uh, from one over to about 40 uh, microns, and of course this is uh, clearly in the infrared region, um, and this this is lead uh, lead selenite. There, generally you will have an increase in these D star with wavelength, and then an abrupt drop off is is typically the the structure that you see for these types type systems. This D star, the first time that you may see this, it looks odd to you. The unit is a centimeter hertz to the one half pile per watt. Tell me if that's not a bit peculiar. Uh, centimeter hertz to the one half pile. And it is one half I'll tell you where that unit sort of comes from. Um, the D star is a figure merge because you want to be able to compare first senses. Obviously, the higher the value for the and the greater the range of usability, the, the more likely that sensor would serve your cause. Okay, now. Uh, many of these now are obviously commercial sensors. Which one would you buy or purchase for your cause? Uh, you first, the first quantity is D, and that's D, D itself is inverse of the noise equivalent power, which is the inverse of the ratio of the noise output to the signal input. So you want that quantity to be large. You want D itself to be large. And then in order to compare all of these type sensors, you then to the, the divide or you normalize each sensor with a certain area, one centimeter squared, and, a, and at a bandwidth of one hertz. When you do that, you then come out with the unit being this D star. And that one hertz gets square, it, there is a square root of the area, but the area is squared, so that leaves you with a centimeter. But when you square, take the square root of a hertz, then it's then it's a hertz square. So it's a little strange unit, but the bottom line is the larger the value for the given wavelength, in principle, the better you would be uh, for that particular uh, the device. Some of the uses then um, for these systems, uh, a whole list of of, uh, of places where you can use these type of sensors, plasma type 